imagine that one day you go to a birthday party and one of your friends said, Anna, can you please say something about the birthday girl? Or Ali, can you please say something about the birthday girl? And you haven't had any preparation. So today, what we're going to do is we're going to discuss how to attempt to give a speech without any preparation. And the speech is impromptu speech. It's categorized as an impromptu speech. The impromptu speech is uh, normally uh, said as uh, speaking off the hook. It means that, sorry, uh, speaking off the cuff. It means that you speak without any preparation. So how are you going to do anything or giving a speech without any preparation? Before this, you have uh, given two speeches, but both speeches you have had a lot of preparation. You're given time to prepare, at least two weeks of preparation. So how are you going to do a speech within a few minutes of knowing that you need to give it? Don't worry. Today, I'm going to give you some tips of how uh, you're going to be able to give this speech easily or almost easily. Everything can be done with uh, the tips that I'm going to give you later. So, um, an impromptu speech is a speech that you need to give without any prior top, prior notice. Yeah. So, um, you of course, since you don't have any any notice, any notice, it means that you don't have any notes that have been prepared. So, what do you need to do? You need to identify the many different ways to organize your thoughts. You need to organize your thoughts. We have done this before in your previous two speeches. Uh, we have talked about the many types of organizational um, organizational patterns. You are going to use this in order to be able to give your speech. And one more thing that will help you in preparing for this type of speeches is using familiar experience. Remember, for this type of speech, you do not have time to research. Whereas the previous two speeches, you have done a lot of speeches. So the easiest way is for you to use familiar experiences, your experiences, your friends' experiences, your family experiences that you know of, your class experiences. Yeah. So these experiences will help you in preparing for the speech. So um, what are the language skills that is important to you? It is important to remember that the language that you use in any presentation is going to reflect upon you. It's going to show people who you are. Therefore, you have to uh, choose the best language to use in any presentation. So if the presentation is for a very familiar uh, group of people, so you can use familiar language with them. Uh, familiar language, what I mean by familiar language is language that you use with close friends. Yeah. But if the speech is, uh, the audience of your speech is uh, going to be uh, people who are your bosses, your teachers, um, people that you don't know, right? So it's important that you use formal language, even if it is done without any preparation. The type of speech or the type of language that you're going to use will always be something that will reflect your credibility. You want people to believe in what you say, to to have respect for you, so you have to use the language that shows you are the person to be respected. Okay, so um, the easiest way or, or the uh, simplest way is that for you to use professional language. This is going to be safe. Okay, so compared to using familiar language that you use with your close friends. Uh, professional language is much better because you 
uh, can safely use it with your friends and as well as your bosses or people you don't know. Okay. Another thing to bear in mind is that your grammar. So make sure that you use uh, correct grammar and your word choices must be um, relevant throughout your speech. Yeah? So what's the preparation that you need to do for your impromptu speech? Number one is uh, your organizational pattern. You have to have an organizational pattern, even if the speech is without any preparation, but you still can uh, use these organizational patterns that we have learned before in informative speech and also in um, persuasive speech in order for you to give your speech or to prepare your speech. Yeah. Normally, after you got to know that you need to give that speech, you have about two or three minutes at least uh, to prepare. Okay. Uh, in the event of you needing to give a speech to uh, a group of friends during a birthday party, normally you'll be told about it at the beginning of the party and maybe you have about 10 minutes to prepare. Okay. Um, but uh in a professional situation normally they'll give you a lot more time maybe 15 minutes 20 minutes before uh, the speech yeah so you have time to prepare but even if you have only two minutes to prepare you can still use any one of these organizational patterns that we are going to review uh in your preparation of your speech in outlining your speech so what are they? Uh, past, present, future. We have discussed this before. This is where um, in your speech, yeah, you organize the body into uh, past. Okay, You talk first about the past and then about the present and then about the future. Maybe, maybe, for example, uh, you, you are, uh, in the event of you giving a speech during a birthday party, you would talk about how you met your friend. So you elaborate on how you met your friend and then um, what is the situation of your relationship now? And the next point would be um, what you're going to, to do together in the future. What's your plan for the future? You want to travel the world, you want to go um, climbing Mount Everest, for example. So that is an example of organizing your impromptu speech using present, sorry, past, present, and future. You can also organize your speech using the chronological order. What is chronological order? It's you arranging your speech according to time, okay, according to time. So you talk about uh, the, the steps. Normally, when you are uh, asked to give a certain procedure to uh, a group of guests, okay, so you say, all right, first, we're going to do this. This is because whatever, whatever. Secondly, we're going to do this. And in this step, we're going to blah, blah, blah. Okay. And next, uh, or finally, we are going to blah, blah, blah. Okay, so you go according to the time and you don't, you don't jump from one step one to step three. You have to go from step one to step two to step three. Okay, so it's chronological order. All right, next is problem solution. You might want to talk about the problem in your introduction. And then maybe in the body, you talk about the solutions that you have for that problem. Solution one, solution two, solution three. Okay, so you have that, you have this in, in your outline. You still have to do some sort of an outline, but not the formal outline that we have done before. It's a simple outline where you, you can use um, mind map. Yeah, so in your mind map, you can have. Um, uh, the main as uh, the problem, yeah, the one in the center, and then the body will be the solutions. Okay, maybe three solutions, two solutions, depends on the time that you're given. 
So if you have only two or three minutes to give, that means it's enough for you to have two solutions. All right. So for your impromptu speech, you're not looking for a lot. You're looking for two point stops. Only two points. Okay. Next is location. You can arrange your speech according to location. We have talked about this before. Um, another word for location is spatial. S P A T I A L. We use this in our module. Yeah. So location or space spatial. So let's say you have been asked to give a speech in a tour bus to a group of tourists because you are the senior tour guide, for example. So you may want to use um, the location order or spatial order in order to arrange your speech, you know, organize your speech. Right? So it is very important to organize your speech because um, your audience will have only you as their guide in understanding your speech. Therefore, you will have to be able to guide them according to some sort of logical organization. All right. Other than location, you can also use cause effect. Okay. In the um, uh, in the first part of your speech, you talked about or your introduction. You talk about the cause, and then the preview will be, or the main points will be about the effects. So, how many effects for your impromptu speech that you're going to do this semester? Enough with two effects, no more than two. Okay, All right. You can also use uh, uh, advantages and disadvantages organization. So you talk about the advantages in one body. Point number one, main point one is about advantages. Point number two, disadvantages. Okay, so when you're previewing, um, you, you're previewing two points only. One on advantages, one on disadvantages. Um, next. Uh, the last one is related subtopics. Okay, so what are related subtopics? Um, you have one topic, like for example, um, the topic that you need to, to give your speech on is pollution, for example. So uh, your subtopics will be the types of pollution that we have. Uh, so how many depends on the time that you have. So if if let's say you are lucky to get that topic in your impromptu speech later, right? So your uh, main points will be two examples of pollutions. What kind of pollutions that we have? Uh, air pollution, water pollution, noise pollution. Uh, we have all sorts of pollution. So you choose two. Okay, so this is only for our impromptu speech. Our impromptu speech, we are, we are focusing on only two main points because we, we don't have time, okay, to we'll focus on a lot. So these are uh, the organizational patterns that you can use. Uh, if you look here, we do not have a Monroe's motivated sequence because in Monroe's motivated sequence, you must have in the body three main points. Okay. So we don't have time for three main points. So we are not going to use Monroe's motivated sequence. But in the future, in your career, um, if let's say you are asked to give a speech, yeah, and you have uh, you are given ten minutes, twenty minutes to give your speech, then of course you can use Monroe's motivated sequence. Right. What we are discussing today is only. Uh, for your for the preparation of the impromptu speech that you are going to give later, okay, right. So, uh, step two, okay. Just now we have evaluate uh, uh, reviewed uh, the types of organizational patterns that you can choose. Step two, you need to plan your speech after learning about the topic of your speech. So, number one, choose an organizational pattern that fits your topic so the organizational pattern can be used whichever you 
uh, you like, but it must be related or relevant to the topic that you're given. Right? So if you're given a topic like pollution, of course you cannot use uh, chronological order. Right? You cannot use uh, time, uh, uh, past, now, future. Or you cannot use um, advantages, disadvantages. Right? So the, the most relevant one would be topic and sub, uh, sorry, topical uh, organization. Number two is you need to plan the body of your speech. Okay, you need to plan. So how do you plan? Using this simple mind map. The topic is in the middle and then you have uh, two main points on the sides. And then you find elaborations for each main point. That will be easy. Or you can use something similar to the outline that you uh, that you have done for your impromptu speech or your persuasive speech also okay right but the most important thing is that you need to plan planning to fail uh, sorry failure to plan is planning to fail okay so i don't want you to fail make sure you plan the body of your speech you have time to plan the two minutes that you have before you, you give your speech um you can plan don't worry you have time to plan okay and then you think about your attention getting opener. You still need to have an attention getting opener. And also, I should have put that uh, an MCR. As any speech that you have done before, you must have an ADO and MCR. Okay? So this can be uh, decided on after you plan the body of your speech. Similar to before, when we discussed uh, how to prepare an informative speech, how to prepare a persuasive speech. I mentioned to you that you need to come up with the points first, okay? The body of your speech. Then you can uh, have a good think about uh, what to put in your AGO and what to put in your MCR because this must be relevant to the body of your speech. If you don't decide on what what you're going to put in the body, then it's, of course it's going to be difficult for you to decide on what is going to be in your EGO and MCR. So this is a basic outline or plan that you can have uh, in preparing, but you're not going, I mean, this is not compulsory. What is important is you have that part introduction body and conclusion just as before so you start with developing the body of your speech okay so you develop your speech using uh, any one of these okay examples facts stories reasons other types of details but this is for the two main points so for each main point you develop your topic so you have to do this twice developing your topic you have to do it twice. This is only for one main point. Okay? Then you go to the second main point. You, you uh, talk about the second main point and then you develop it. Develop means elaborate. Remember, always you have your main points and elaborations or supporting details. Okay? So you still need to do it. Right? So how many supporting details? Maybe one or two. No more than that because you don't have time. You have only two minutes to present your speech. So we are not expecting too much. But we want to see you elaborating your main points. How many main points? Two main points. How do you develop your main points? Using examples, facts, stories, reasons, or other types of details. Okay. So you start with that body and then you go to the introduction and then you go to the conclusion all right so that's what you need to do okay so this this is step line step three of uh, your preparation for your impromptu speech which is outlining your impromptu speech but if you don't want to do it this way you just have your mind up it's still okay because you're not going to take a look at your uh, outline 
we want to listen to you we want to watch you we want to see you how uh, you are going to uh, develop your speech based on the topic that you have just got to know a few moments before okay and that's the end of our presentation today In conclusion, we now know that in order for you to give a good impromptu speech, you just need to organize your thoughts and use your experiences. You are now ready to speak off the cuff.